Welcome one and all to Umami Manga. I'm Petter and this is James. Hi. And today we're talking about volume 21 of Kaguya-sama Love is War. It's so great to be talking about Kaguya-sama again. I'm so happy to be back into this. It Absolutely. feels like it's been so many months, I feel, since last time. I don't know exactly how many months it's been. Maybe only like two or so. No, it's been more, more than that. But it's been some time at least. At least three. Must have been, yeah. At least three. Right. Come on. I think so. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but, but anyway, we are back. Volume 21. And... I'll just kick the discussion off by shedding a little bit of light on the fact that this volume ends with an announcement that the story is entering its final stage. Yeah. And I guess I just want to, or I, I wonder just kind of what does that mean? Is the final mm-hmm. stage going to be, is that the same thing as a final arc? Meaning it will be, you know, a couple more volumes maybe that will cover the last arc? Or, or does the final stage mean that it's, you know, the several last couple of arcs, meaning there will be another 20 volumes or so. Like, or, like obviously we can't, we, we can't really know. But it did remind me that since we recorded last time, there was a, a statement by Akasaka where he said that the story is moving into its final arc in the manga. And obviously we're a bit behind, obviously, with the English releases here. Mm-hmm. So he would have said that at some point beyond this part of the story that we've just read mm. uh, i know the japanese volumes are currently at 24 as of last week so maybe that's where the final arc technically will begin or so around there maybe do you have any any thoughts on this just that when it said final stage i was wondering was well, that mean that their entire third year is going to be the final stage but right. I mean, it took it took us like 21 volumes to get to that point exactly yeah because <laughs> this whole story so far has been in their second year yeah it could be a much quicker pace through the months that these volumes take so there's less of the mm. kind of day by day shenanigans maybe potentially um or it it ends or at least the the story ends um during the the middle of this year Okay, when I say story, I mean like the the main conflict ends at the middle of their third year, and then like the story wraps up at you know they're graduated and whatnot. You oh know, yeah, that kind of gotcha, thing. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, definitely a possibility. I, I I think without the the thing that Akasaka said about the final arc, well, the final arc is about to start or whatever he said. I can't remember the exact words, but. Without that statement, I would have been very much at a loss whether it would be like three more volumes or 20 more volumes. But hmm. but with that statement, I feel like we are, well, that the final stage might mean a, a few little arcs perhaps coming here before the ending. Because let's say 22 to 24 or so is, is an arc, some sort of little arc perhaps with some sort of focus Mm -hmm. and then after that after volume 24 perhaps that's when the final arc starts which would maybe be another another couple of volumes so with that in mind i i'm kind of gonna predict that the story is gonna or the manga when it's finished will end up at around 30 volumes maybe a bit less than that but i guess around 30 i mean yeah i i can for sure see the final arc being a really big one oh yeah yeah because compared to some of the other arcs that have happened, I mean, I would I would say some arcs have lasted like three, four volumes before they get move on to a, a new arc. And so I, I but this being the final one and there being quite a bit of moving pieces that haven't even really gotten to that. I, I feel like the progression towards the climax, like I don't think it's quite mm. gotten to that point yet. I would think the final arc would need to be a little bit longer. So yeah. getting it in 30 volumes I think that makes sense. Or, well, ending it at 30 volumes. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, 30, 30 more volumes, and then we'll be good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, please, just give me more of this. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, and one other little thing, and this is kind of a silly little thing that I wanted to say before we get into the character, character discussions here, is that when we talked about volume 20, I introduced my cat, whose name is Shino. And I, I think I said in that episode at the start of it or something that I sometimes call her Shinomiya for fun, just because, you know, <laughs> Shino, Shinomiya. And mm-hmm. obviously, you know, I, I like Hagasama. And so that was funny. And actually, since then, I have also realized that I, another thing I can call her for fun is Miko Shino. <laughs> and so needless to say, I was pretty happy with that one. <laughs> anyway, anyway, that's, uh, uh, let's just uh, move 
past that. Okay, and- we get it. You're a simp. <laughs> I am a simp, and I love my kitten. Uh, so yeah, just all the best of both worlds. <laughs> so, starting with Kaguya Shinomiya. So I guess the the big reveal in this volume is that she withdrew her application from Stanford, right? Yeah. And I I felt like it was going to happen, or at least. Not not in that she would withdraw, but that she would be forced to stay in Japan. You know what I mean? I didn't think she would actually go to America with Miyuki. I, I just didn't think that was going to happen. Uh-huh. Now, I don't know. I, I, I'm still uncertain if Miyuki will actually go or not. But I, I felt like that Kaguya's family would not al- allow her to do it. Definitely. But she has chosen to stay in Japan and increase her power within the Shinomiya family in order to potentially stop her father and brothers from having power over her seems to sort of be her well her her goal in some capacity and this actually gives me a lot of hope because it i feel like it, it opens up the possibility of kaguya eventually becoming the head of the shinomiya clan and i i know I'm, maybe i'm <laughs> maybe i'm dreaming too big here but this it, it definitely opens up that possibility at the very least and yeah if she would eventually be able to attain that status within the Shinomiya clan, then she would be able to, you know, put an end to all of their outdated and greedy endeavors that have plagued so many people or just pained so many people. She could really change that for the better, and a lot of people would benefit from that. That's true. I didn't think about it like that. I just figured that she was waging war in order for her to separate herself from that family. Right. But you're right. If she's gaining all that appeal within the family, mm. then why not strive to be to take take that head spot and just yeah, get rid of get rid of the Shinomiya clan, like that that powerhouse. Yeah, right. Or or it seems like there could be some economic issues that come with that because of how how much power that the Shinomi family has, so maybe it's more of like a reduce the amount of power that they that they own, and dis, you know, right. distribute to change change the practices. But yes. I, I also think that it's important to realize her goal is to, in the end, separate from that and just be with the Shirogane family. You know, yeah, oh, absolutely. Be with mm-hmm. So, what? However, she does or what? Whatever she has to do to get to that point, the end game is that she would be with that family. Definitely. And speaking of their of the Shirogane family in in regards to Kaguya is how I something I loved to see in this book was just how unafraid Kaguya is to show her her love for Miyuki and and her care for Miyuki at least in in a lot of situations especially mm-hmm. when it comes to his family cuz that openness that she seems to desire both with Miyuki and with his sister and dad now mm-hmm. as well to to a degree at least I, I felt like we got a bit of that in this book uh, where you know she she was grocery shopping with Daddy Shirogane and she was mm-hmm. you know bathing with with Kay, and they were having these conversations. Or Kage was asking them both pretty personal questions, and she didn't mm. shy away from really from well from doing that. So I, I thought that was really awesome that that she's really getting, or she is eager to get co- close to them as well as Miki, and I guess on on that like being, well, not not being afraid of showing that at least in certain situations here. It was so sweet when, you know, she she got to stay the night and and she wanted to well and well well they ended up falling asleep in 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 each other's arms, but Kaguya didn't really seem to mind if Kay mm-hmm. found out. Like, just thought that was really sweet in so many ways. Right, she's become very, at least at least in front of the Shirogana family, more mm. open to it. I mean, she has to be right if if she wants <laughs> to have a relationship with this man, she's got to be okay with <laughs> his family knowing. Yeah. <laughs> um, like the only thing she was really kind of shy about was expressing that she loves Miyuki. Yeah. <laughs> but you know that's that's still understandable. Um, but yeah. they've gotten she's gotten to a point where she's comfortable expressing that and and showing that it well and also showing like you said interest in Miyuki's family. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad she's willing to take these steps. It was probably probably part of the reason why she wanted to visit his house so bad is that. He can get to know the family, but also let Miyuki know what I really want is to be with your family. I want to be with you and not part of the, the Shinomiya clan anymore, the family anymore. Mm. 
and then I'll obviously tell him about her not being able to do the whole uh, uh, study abroad thing. But, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was it was a lot of a lot of good stuff. A lot of good uh, focus setting moments because we basically had fulfilled the plot. Right. They <laughs> they confessed to each other. Right. Right. So yeah. now we understand what the new goal is. Right. Exactly. And where they're going to go, what their actions are are going to lead them to, or trying to lead them to. Right. And Kaguya expressed when when she was spending the night at the Shirugane's place, uh, and she was talking to Miyuki before they fell asleep, she said that she was afraid that someone might take her time with Miyuki away from her. Mm -hmm. And that does remind me, or at least well, it makes me think of the tale of the bamboo cutter, where Princess Kaguya was taken away from earth and had to leave everyone that she had gotten mm -hmm. to know there forever when the you know when her people from the moon came to bring her back so the fact that she has the fear of uh well being robbed of her time with miyuki definitely i think mirrors that part from the folktale and it does kind of scare me a little bit since i think there was an interview this may have been quite a while back now so i may not remember it perfectly but mm -hmm. what i recall is that akasaka said something along the lines of that he hadn't decided if he wanted to go with the tragic ending of the tale of the bamboo cutter or if he wanted to make his own more happy ending for the for the manga and with that ending kind of undecided or i i'm sure he maybe had he maybe has decided at, by this point but but just the fact that even though this is a comedy to a large extent, the ending it won't necessarily be a happy one. It does make me worry, especially when <laughs> these sorts of uh, things, I guess, get brought up. Right. Well, the first thing that came to my mind when she mentioned that was some sort of, well, obviously the Shinomiya family stepping in and maybe even providing arranged marriage. And lo and behold, yeah, Oko brings that up. Yeah. And I, I just want to say I called it yep. way back way back when I said that arranged marriage was definitely a theory I, I had. And I think that it's definitely a, an, in, an interesting hurdle that she'll have to get over and it gives her motivation to leave the, that family. Mm. But I, I think it also can tie into that analogy you were bringing up with the actual tale of the bamboo cutter mm, yeah. and how she had to leave earth like that. So m maybe there's that sort of uh, comparison to be made that unless they do something to stop it, she'll have to be separated from Miyuki. Precisely. So yeah, I guess it could be seen as a warning in a way. Mm -hmm. Or a straight up foreshadowing. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, uh, let's hope it's not death. Like, that <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Anything more on Kakia? I think it's interesting that we learned that it was the Shinomiya family that basically stole Shirogane dad's company away from him. Yeah. You know? Mm hmm And I, I don't know. I, I guess it, it makes sense, but you don't think about it because you're not really thinking about how he lost his his company at the time. Yeah, yeah. I guess my, in my mind, I had always just kind of imagined that it, his company failed because maybe he wasn't capable enough to keep it running or something like that had been my thoughts. But this makes it far worse of course like he right he definitely didn't deserve or I'm, I'm not saying he had deserved it otherwise either but uh mm -hmm. yeah yeah just a shitty situation obviously kaguya feels bad about that but um it's not her fault <laughs> no no absolutely <laughs> but hopefully yeah hopefully there's a, she's able to change the shinomiya clan so that stuff like that doesn't happen exactly yeah that, that, that's what i really hope for anyway yeah for sure something just briefly about her mom, mm. it probably was already mentioned that her name was Nayotake, right? Yep. And for some reason, I didn't, I didn't look it up what the name, the reference was, but it, it, yeah, it's the original Kaguyohime name, like from from. Oh yeah, the, that's right. From the tale. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, oh my god. And so you have Take, which is bamboo, and I wasn't sure what Nayo means, mm. but l looking it up apparently means young bamboo. So, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. That um, makes perfect sense for her. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. And actually, on that, I know that you know Japanese, and obviously, uh, there's. You, I guess you can't know. You can't know all, all every single word, but <laughs> but um, 
something that I looked up at some point after I had gotten my cat. And I want to talk talking about my cat again. Um, <laughs> I named her Shino. It is a Japanese name, but it wasn't necessarily re- related to Kaguya-sama or anything. Mm-hmm. It was just a coincidence that Shino Mia, you know, happened to be similar to that. And yeah, it, then it made me, th- it made me, I guess, wonder because when I have looked up the name Shino online, just kind of meet the name's meaning. It has mm-hmm. sometimes said it that it means bamboo stalk. Mm. And so if that's true, then I feel like it was maybe intentional by Akasaka to name Kaguya Shinomiya if part of Shinomiya means bamboo stick or something or whatever. I, I can't remember exactly now. Fortunately, the kanji is four. Shinomiya? It, it's four. Yeah, so it's, I believe it's Shino is the kanji for four. And then Mia is its kanji. I think Mia is, I think it's like a, a hut or uh, I gotta look it up. But, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I know I know the first kanji is four. Gotcha. Is the is the number four? So, but may but maybe there was like, a, a kind of a sly thing where, you know, oh we'll use this kanji, but you know another another kanji that uses Shino is bamboo. Exactly. Like he could have thought of I guess the yeah the pronunciation could sound like that or or, or yeah like, yeah as he said like maybe a little slyer thing. Uh, obviously, it's not guaranteed, but I, I still I do feel like it. Obviously, since the bamboo cutter, tale of the bamboo cutter, you know we have bamboo all already in the title of that story. Then I feel like it, it's a decent possibility that it, that it was intentional. Ah, so Mia is actually more like a palace. That's my bad. I knew it was some ah. sort of like building. Okay, <laughs> okay. Like so palace. so the last name or the family name Shinomiya means like four palaces. I I, I guess. Cool, cool. Sounds very noble. Yeah aristocrat yes like <laughs> yeah mm. i i really want to know more about her mom yeah who she was i mean I, I mean yes we know that she was a mistress kind of a thing yeah but who was she exactly and i have more to say on that but we'll wait until we get to another character gotcha gotcha then shall we move on to the next one sure then let's talk about miyuki next we are able to understand even further in this volume just how traumatized he is still mm-hmm. by, you know, his mother leaving and, well, the way in which she did leave. And he definitely has improved. Sure. You know, or he, he, has, he has gotten better in it, but, but it's, yeah. it's, it's clearly still there. Like, well, his, his recent exam score, I think, showed that he, there had been improvement for sure. Yeah. But, but yeah, he definitely is still struggling with understanding that he doesn't need to excel at everything, sadly. Which, which makes me feel like there will be something else major about that like i i i'm i feel pretty confident that his mother will appear like in person Mm. in the story at some point yeah and there will be some sort of you know important impactful moment there for miyuki Mm -hmm. i could definitely see that and i think it would be a, a good kind of closure for him if that were to happen right whether it is not necessarily cutting ties but just expressing how he feels to his mother. Yeah, he needs that. Mm. Yeah, he needs that. Now, it, how she reacts is is one thing, but I, I, like you said, he needs that. So that'd mm. be great if she does come back into the story for that to happen. Definitely. I think the big thing for me is that we, among many things, is that we learned about his true dream, like his true goal. Right. It's to take back his father's company. Mm. And basically, you know, become the CEO of that. And so he feels like he needs to go to proceed to school overseas in order to fulfill that. Exactly. And so on that, when Kaguya, well, when when she gave Miyuki the news that she had withdrawn her application to Stanford, he said he would do the same. Mm-hmm. But then Kaguya, you know, she, she basically told him not to because, well, or, well yeah, she had that whole speech basically that it was okay for him to do that if she was going to go after her dream. Mm -hmm. But that scene, well, Miyuki didn't really say anything more after that in that scene. So I wonder what's he thinking? Like, what, what's his, like how, what, what, what does he want to do really there? Mm Because he, when, when he initially said that he would also withdraw his, his application to Stanford, he seemed to, you know, it, it seemed chill for him like he he, he right. said like he had other options and uh like he didn't seem really that bothered by it i agree which makes me feel like he could potentially still take his father's company back 
with an education in Japan. Of course, I don't know, you know, there, there's a lot we don't know exactly, you know, about the details there, but I guess something that I'm very excited to, to learn in the next volume, hopefully, is just where he stands on this, like, what's, he, what's his uh, thoughts mm -hmm. on, on that? So something that your discussion about the comparison with the Tale of the Bamboo Cutter hmm. got me thinking about Miyuki going away to the U.S. and then Kaguya still being in Japan. Perhaps that could be her leaving for the moon, although it's, it's vice versa. Miyuki's leaving. Right. Leaving. Yeah. But you remember how he said that the person in the story, he gave up or whatever, but Miyuki himself says, I, I would try everything I could to get, get her back or something like that, you know? Yeah, 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 when they were looking at this guy, yeah. Right, so maybe he would do everything he could to get, get back to the U.S., or maybe or maybe he would do everything he can to not go to the U.S. Yeah, that, that that's actually more my thinking as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that was just a thought I had because you brought that up. Right, right, right. No, I think I think it's a really good point, well, to, to bring up what he's told Kaguya when they were looking at the moon in that chapter, because... Mm -hmm. It definitely he would stand by that still. I'm sure he would. And with that in mind, I'm probably leaning more toward thinking that he doesn't want to leave her. Mm. Uh, that he will stay in Japan. Because really, I'm also I'm also sort of thinking like from a narrative standpoint, like for the story, like <laughs> how is it actually gonna work if the characters are separated like that? Yeah. Like, at least for a longer period of time, it's not gonna work. I don't think. <laughs> I think the only way it would work is if, because I have I have read manga that they do separate the characters for whatever reason, and it, just, it doesn't work out. Like, n and not just the characters in the story, but just the the story itself suffers greatly. Right, I can imagine. Um, so, I think if it were if he were still to do it, it would be kind of a epilogue kind of a thing. It's like, oh yeah, Miyuki left for the U.S., but don't worry, we're doing great, and then. <laughs> Ten yeah. years later, we're 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 married. You know, that, <laughs> exactly, that, that kind of stuff. However, I do think it's important to still make the comparison of Shinomiya being, or not Shinomiya. Well, yeah, Shinomiya, but Kage mm -hmm. being taken away by the Shinomiya family is like potentially her going to the moon, right? And that the what the Shinomiya clan would expect Miyuki to do is just to give up and just live his life as a commoner, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Instead of doing everything he can to get her back, which I think is definitely a possibility will happen. Mm -hmm. Not to say that I think Kage will play a kind of a passive role and that she'll have to rely on Miyuki in order to uh, escape the clutches, because I think, at least I feel the, the direction of the story is that she's going to play a key role in sep separating from the clan. And it's not just going to be Miyuki and company rescuing her, per se, but... Anyway, I, I think that that's an important comparison to, to be had that I guess we sh shouldn't ignore. Not saying we were, but right, right. going to the U.S. may not be the only way that compares. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so more on Miyuki. I, I thought it was really nice of him to, you know, to gather the whole, the, the previous student council to celebrate the, the previous student council president's graduation. So that was the previous student council, right? Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Or at least okay. I know that uh, Riju or whatever her name is, um, Momo. The, Momo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Riju, right? Yeah, yeah. Momo. Uh, I, I know that she at least was was part of that student council. Um, so and just since she was there, and there were like one or two other uh, people there that I just assume were also part of that, mm. was super sweet uh, just to see that. And and I guess on that. Well, the the previous student council president, when we saw him last time in that flashback, there was a little there was a page after that chapter that said that he would come back again in the summer episode. Right. <laughs> uh, and obviously, it's spring right now in the story. So it's I I guess it makes me wonder like could it have been a mistranslation? I don't know how that would have been a tr mistranslation though. Yeah. Um, there's no way. Or or will he actually come back again? Probably that. And that, and that also, because I got two ideas there for how he would return. Either he would come mm -hmm. back, you know, once the story reaches summer, and then he would somehow make his way back into the story for, for a bit, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Or there will be another flashback chapter where he mm -hmm. will appear, and it, it's going to be a flashback to some time during summer, perhaps. 
Um, mm-hmm. That's also, I guess, a way you could interpret that. Right. Uh, but at least, at least we did see him again after, after quite some time. And I guess whatever happens next time we see him in summer, I suppose, what, whatever happens mm-hmm. then, I'm hoping and sort of expecting an explanation to why he seems to be so... Well, he uses the word hated uh, by a lot of the other students, supposedly. Hmm. Um, like, how come? Like, he was elected student council president at some point, and now he's hated by a lot of the students. I Yeah, it's just a weird thing, and I, I want to know why. I wonder if it has anything to do with Miyuki and him being kind of a quote-unquote commoner kind yeah. of thing. I had that thought too, but I actually started noting down some of that on, into my notes here. Uh, hmm. But then I erased it because because I I felt like I, I I'm not saying it's 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 a bad idea. You think I it's just, a bad idea? Oh <laughs> <laughs> no! But I the the thing the, the reason why I didn't uh, note it down in the end was because I feel like why would Miyuki get elected and elected mm-hmm. twice even? Mm-hmm. And be you know supposed like seemingly popular, despite of his you know kind of him being unpure or whatever you know and stuff like that. Mm. So yeah, like despite of all that, he still seems to be relatively popular. And why would why would that previous student council person be disliked for having stood up for Miyuki or or suggested Miyuki or whatever he has done? I, I don't I don't really feel like it makes sense all things considered. Maybe the the former president took on kind of a a bad guy role, a villain role, oh. in, in compared to Miyuki, but Miyuki knew that. Uh, um, not that they were scheming or anything, but right, maybe right. he just the president took it upon himself in order to do that for whatever reason. I don't, I don't know. I'm just throwing out theories here. Right, right. But maybe. I think for me, what I want to know is, Juju's Momo's like her whole deal and what what her exactly relationship is with the former president and, and, and Miyuki, you know, what exactly uh, is her backstory. And I'm hoping that when he comes back to the story, we get a little bit more of that as well. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Obviously want to know more about all of the quote unquote impossible girls. So yeah, Momo is definitely one I want to know more about. Well, I, I say that because the president, the, okay. I, I think I think that he could be an important part of it, and if right. we understand his backstory, we got to we probably will understand the other student council. True. You know what I mean, not right. not like not those people who didn't really have a face. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but yeah, but, Momo but for sure. But Yuki and Momo. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely right. So yeah, definitely want to know about those two. Anything more on Miyuki? They really harped on the fact that the motivational sticky notes was unhealthy. Uh, and it was funny, like don't get me wrong, <laughs> but it also was kind of like I mean, some of it is not bad. No, you know, he just got carried. He got carried uh, carried away with it, and obviously putting <laughs> it all over the ceiling and everything. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Obviously, he he got carried away. Yeah, and I think it's the way. It's not only his obsession with them. It's also kind of the way he makes it look. With well, as you said, like the amount of them and mm. like putting them, yeah, like literally everywhere. But also just kind of the how they are put up. It's kind of like it looks kind of messy, and the the kind of the writing looks kind of kind of, kind of creepy. Kind of, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but yeah, no, I agree. Like in in and of itself, it's not a bad thing, but it definitely looks creepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then at the very end of this volume here, Miyuki seems very shocked and kind of upset at seeing Mikado join their school right uh we'll, we'll talk more about Mika a little later but just mm-hmm. miyuki's reaction here is very interesting obviously we had seen that note like one of his notes had been about Mikado, and so there there is some sort of past thing between the two of them but i am very interested in and very curious i guess about why like what has happened in their past right. yeah and i wonder if he knew that he was like since obviously or pretty clearly he has known Mikado in his past. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if he knew that Maki was his twin. You know, when he got to know, when he befriended oh. Maki, I wonder if he knew about that or, or if he just found out about that just now that they were twins. I, I wonder. Good question. <laughs> but 
Mm. I, I guess there isn't too much to go on, but do you have any thoughts at all? It's interesting to bring in a potential rival to for Miyuki. I just mm-hmm. don't know what the purpose of introducing this new character will be yet. Yeah, Not to right. say I, I, I don't trust him, but it's like, what does Miyuki need a rival for right now? Or maybe he won't be a rival. I don't know. We'll see. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. What kind of role is Mikado going to play? It, it, yeah. I'm, I'm very excited for that. Anything more on Miyuki before we move onward? I'm good. Cool. Then let's talk about Chika next. Oh, okay. Yes. I'm, I'm going there. <laughs> I feel like I'm usually like putting her way down in, in the discussion <laughs> order, but I feel, I felt like this time let's talk about her third. So sure. <laughs> um, so in the first chapter, I, I'm, or I guess I'll just say right off the bat, the first chapter got me teary-eyed pretty much every single page. Uh, but mm. like, even though we don't really know the other board game club members that well, mm-hmm. like that whole interaction that they had when they had to like say goodbye to Megako and like yeah. that scene was so it touched me so much. And I think, and you know, also the one with the, the media club members had a, a sort of a similar little scene and. I think what's so touching about those sorts of scenes, even though you don't necessarily know the characters all that well, is that, well, pretty much all of us has, have, have have gone to school. Yeah. And so we we all know what, what it's like to, well, mm-hmm. to, to have that finality kind of to stop. Well, we know, that, okay, we're not going to see each other every single day anymore. Or, well, every school day. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's just such a, yeah, it's just such a big thing that a lot of people can relate to. And... Right. It makes it work so well. I, Akasaka really captured the feeling of that so well in those scenes, mm-hmm. even though they were brief. I agree. Anyway, finally, Chika gets, Chika gets to meet the fourth ramen king of Tokyo. Hey! And gets the pic- picture <laughs> taken and everything. Uh, <laughs> and, and, like, yeah, she has met all four of them now, but she technically hasn't, I guess, faced off against the taxi driver yet. Yeah. The... J Suzuki of Koenji. Is Koenji a district or a part of Tokyo? I believe so. I also think not, so. Not one that I'm completely familiar with. But. Got right, right. But it seems like that that's the inter because I looked back at volume five just to refresh my mind. Uh so J Suzuki of Koenji is kind of how he's referred to. And I also noticed that the ramen chef in this volume or er, that lady who was the fourth ramen king of Tokyo, she had known that sushi chef in Koenji, in the mm. district which Suzuki, the taxi driver, is like the ramen king of, I suppose. Hmm. Um, I don't know if there's going to be, if, if, it, if that has any significance, but I did pick up on that it was the same area uh, that was mentioned. But anyway, uh, I guess what we can predict about Chika's future ramen endeavors is that she will meet up with Jay Suzuki <laughs> at a ramen shop uh, at some point soon. Or maybe not soon necessarily, but yeah, in the future. I think it's so funny. She just kind of plays a, a background character during the whole thing and, <laughs> yeah. and just kind of gets wrangled into it at the very end. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I figured we can talk about those characters from that chapter under Chika. If there's anything else on either of them. Oh, not... I mean... I can make up stuff, but I don't really have anything that <laughs> yeah that stood out per se. Mm. I thought I thought it was funny, and I I I liked kind of the the direction it it went, but yeah, well, yeah. Um, <laughs> nothing nothing much else. Poor Chica. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what goes in must come out. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate Chica wanting to fix Ishigami. Yeah, yeah. Or well, you know, it was a bit, 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 bit of selfish reasons, I suppose. I guess I, I don't know. If, I don't know if I even call it that. Obviously, she didn't want. She didn't like that that Ishigami was not acting like himself. You know, mm. and I, I think like any good friend, you want to like help help the person out or like you know fix them in some way. I, and I don't think it was necessarily for selfish reasons, other than. Oh yeah, this would this would not be great for my well being. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but I mean, to be fair, it, it, he did he was making it incredibly awkward. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I I don't I don't blame I don't blame her for wanting to help him, um, but I think she gives some good advice to Ishigami, 
uh, in the next chapter where he's like, he's, I'm going to move on or whatever. Right. Yeah. But, she, you know, she says, I understand, like, you should totally try to, like, date date someone. And that way you won't be awkward when you try to be friends with uh, <laughs> Tsubame. Mm-hmm. And I, pre- I appreciate the advice. But also she kind of sly, she slyly goes into her ship. You know, it's like, oh, what about uh, Miko? Uh, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I appreciate her supporting her friend and, you know, getting on her ship and everything like that. <laughs> yeah. But maybe it was a little too soon, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And I also love both both Miyuki and Kaguya's reactions to that in, in the background there. Like, really? Are you doing this right now? <laughs> like, <laughs> come on. Uh <laughs> so like if she had just said what you know that that line about you know finding someone else or something like that mm. you know that that would be good but then she yeah. just had to go on to the Miko <laughs> thing come on love detective <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah oh I mean it is in character though so it's, oh yeah oh, you know, oh yeah absolutely she makes us laugh <laughs> absolutely but she also makes us uh pull our hair out <laughs> And that's all I have on Chica. Right. I have one last thing. And it's Chica points out that everyone's in the same class, you know, in the last chapter of this book, uh, which is awesome, by the way. It's great, absolutely great to see all of our yeah. third year characters in the same class. And she even takes note or makes note of this guy named Shindo. <laughs> and You're bringing that up? Like, I just put that in the jokes. Well, yeah. Well, so here's the thing. After she named Shindo... She said, uh-huh. things are going to get interesting. And then she gulps and she has like a little sweat drop in her face. Mm-hmm. Obviously, that could have been referring to like just the whole situation as a whole. Like everyone's here. Mm-hmm. But it was also the fact that it was mentioned right after she pointed out Shindo just gave me the idea that what if she knows Shindo? How well does she know Shindo? Who is Shindo? And like, <laughs> could he potentially be a love interest for Chika moving forward? Oh, what? Wow! <laughs> I know this is maybe a bit too wacky, I did, but <laughs> I did not think about this um, because honestly, I, I I all I saw was Shindo was just a a, a gag character, you know, just yeah, you know, just just <laughs> even his face is just I know kind of kind of like a joke, you know, caricature, right? <laughs> especially compared to all the beautiful people that Akasaka draws, you know, but. Uh, I mean, I guess you can never say never, and and maybe maybe you're picking up on something that totally went by me. Honestly, <laughs> I just saw it as a joke, and that that she was just interested about the whole situation. However, right. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I I would not object to there being a some sort of love interest for Chica, right? Or, or if she has a little more to do in the story that's not just comedic. Exactly. I but at the same time, I don't know who i guess shindo is a <laughs> eligible bachelor I, but the only other person that that we have a name for that could be like a character or, you know a, a a person in the plot is mikado but we don't even know if they if chica them have any sort of re- interaction or if they're gonna gel together so at this point i'm just kind of like you know mm. i guess chica chica will be single in this story that's that's what Right now, that's that's the vibe I'm getting. Right, we'll right. See. I guess you you mentioned so many times, or maybe you didn't so many times, but you mentioned that Shindo. Well, you just read him as a Joe character, which is 100 percent understandable. I, like, he, you know, he actually might just be that. But mm-hmm. when I like, if we combine him being a Joe character with the, the idea that, <laughs> uh, well, he might be a love interest for Chica, well, uh-huh. that that. That's kind of fit, because she is also largely a joke character, sadly. Mm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Um, I guess it's a possibility, but definitely, I, I, I'm aware that this is my, maybe a bit of a long shot. Hey man, take your shots when you can. <laughs> <laughs> yes, will do. Uh, anyway, I, that, that's all for Chica, for me. I'm just surprised it was it was you who brought up potential love interest for Chica and not me. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. What, 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 what world are we living in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, next, I want to talk a little bit about Miko Ino. First of all, just saying, like, just hearing, like, for her to hear her crush saying so blatantly that mm. they'd never see you as a romantic interest must be yeah. absolutely awful. Absolutely. <sighs> 
and like in front of her in that way and oh it's so oh just, just that scene just made my heart ache kind of a little bit right. like, i just felt for her so much because and, and and she obviously not you know she just kind of suffers through that in silence and it's just such a terrible situation yeah that i mean yeah it's tough and you, you do feel bad for her to be fair that was just kind of the the vibe that their relationship kind of gave off yeah um up to this point but yeah. obviously miko's feelings have changed Mm-hmm. Um, or grown, or however you want to explain it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, not not looking great for the Miko Ishigami Miko Yu ship. You know. No. Yeah. I guess we need we need we need some of this drama though. It, you know, <laughs> it can't all go smoothly all the time. You know, we need. Some... I mean, it would be weird if you know he gets dumped by one girl and then goes on to the next, or that it, you know Miko quickly gets on the rebound kind of a thing. You know. Yeah. Right, right, right. Actually, in in that sense, I'm happy. I suppose about it in a way because, yeah, I, 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 I also wouldn't want you to just immediately go on like move on to Miko as if though she was just like a Plan B kind of thing. Right. Definitely. So yeah, that that is a good point. I guess let let, let this simmer for a bit before, before their ship starts moving again. I suppose. It also doesn't help that she's kind of had these conflicted feelings. Yeah. Throughout the whole thing, where. She says, "Oh, I was I was being a good girl. I was being a good good girl the whole time, but then mm. when I found out Ishigami got dumped or or rejected, I was happy, you know. And mm. I, I that's terrible for me to do that. And she feels bad about that, mm. which I understand why she would feel that way. But mm. I also understand, you know, getting a little excited that your crush is technically still free you know right yeah absolutely it's not too late Uh huh. i feel bad that she has she feels like she needs to beat herself up because of it yeah um but but i guess i understand why she feels the need or why why she feels that she shouldn't be that that way yeah i feel like she has been in such a bad spot now for so many volumes like I feel like volume 16 was kind of a bit of a middle volume in a way for her. Mm-hmm. But ever since then, like volume 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, she's been feeling terrible about, 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 well, about her feelings for you. Cause she has, I guess when she started having those feelings, he was dating Tsubame or he, he was at least about to start dating her. Mm-hmm. And they've been doing that up until very recently now. And, pretty much right after that whole thing ends between the two of them he says that he could never think of her in that way and so like it it's really it's just obstacle after obstacle for miko right now in in that front (laughs) and it's just it pains me so much to see her this way but it also well i i am still keeping faith up that that she will somehow well it it, obviously it'll be good in the end i just don't know how and you know (laughs) Mm mm-hmm but I I do think it's really well written. Like sure. her whole arc right now is it's just so sad and well done. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta wonder how long is she gonna be the good girl? You know what I mean? Oh, like, ooh. she calls herself a good girl, and but no, I'm not really a good girl or something like that. <laughs> I don't know what 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 would be a bad girl like taking Ishigami for herself, like taking the initiative maybe. Right, or I was, I was when you when you mentioned that, I uh, my thoughts went mm-hmm. to like maybe her, like maybe she would just at some point get enough of whatever she is keeping up with or, or putting up with that she would just kind of snap, oh. or like some somehow she would just well <laughs> crack to hun on you in in a way that she hasn't before, <laughs> I guess like like just more real than it has before maybe, I mm. I don't know I don't know. Interesting. It, it it could be bad because because she is bottling all these um, these feelings up. Sure, True. she she's venting with Mi- Miyuki sometimes, but maybe that's not quite enough. And so I feel like the risk with bottling feelings up inside like that, the risk there is that every everything's just gonna explode at some point, right. and it's gonna be a really bad situation. So I guess that is a possibility that something something that could happen. Absolutely. So I guess we'll see. Yeah. Right. But she and you are seated next to each other in the classroom now, or or in front of each other, back well behind each other. Uh, so there, or I, I don't know if they were before. I think they were before. They actually I probably think. they probably were before since they were in the same yeah. class and with their yeah. names being what they are. So yeah, they but but anyway, they still are. Uh, <laughs> so I guess 
I guess Miko is happy about that. Score uh, one for Miko. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it can't be a bad thing. Uh, I guess you know. No. You know, getting to spend more time with each other is uh, has got to be good. Absolutely. Mm. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, we also. I don't know if we knew this before. I guess. I guess we understood her sleeping habits, but we also know now we know she's a hugger. Like she yes. likes <laughs> hugs, especially from behind. She likes yeah. it from behind. That's <laughs> twice as good. <laughs> she likes hugs quadruple times more than other people. <laughs> <laughs> that was so cute. <laughs> Too bad Miyuki is a guy. I know. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Too bad Miyuki's a guy and straight. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm right. Sorry. No, that no, you're right. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> true. <laughs> uh. But yeah, it's interesting that I guess touching and and the hug is such a strong, I guess, love language for her apparently. But I guess praise in general is is also one. That's true. I don't know, she's very needy. <laughs> I mean, she is because. She, both of her parents have always been so absent throughout her right. life, pretty much. Yeah. And no, I agree. Yeah. So, because uh, we have talked about that in relation to well, being praised and like stuff like that, and kind of getting that sort of attention. I think in previous discussions, we I think we've touched on that being, I guess, a reason or a, a product of her upbringing. Mm -hmm. But I think the hug hugs thing makes sense with that as well, because since I guess it is such a, I guess, basic like sign of affection or like a way to show affection like it's definitely like simpler than a kiss or like and like other like stuff like that it's like i guess it, it would be the first thing that one would have to i guess get used to or, or something but mm -hmm. she hasn't gotten that the luxury of getting used to hugs because of her parents always being away and that's mm. may, maybe that's why i can see that from my understanding of japanese culture hugging in general is not something that they do very often, especially right. compared to the West. Like in True. America I felt like, you know, I was I was even hugging my my fr my friends, my bros, you know, mm. girls that we were just friends I would hug. Um Right. You know, it, the hugging was things that you would do with friends. In Japan I didn't really notice too many people embracing each other. Um yeah. even handshakes are kind of not very common, more common now, but mm. just yeah, not not much of a thing. Exactly. So I feel like hugging is much more intimate in Japan. So implying that in this circumstance, obviously because yes, Miyuki's a guy and he has a girlfriend, but just also the I guess the intimate implications it has is just like kind of heavy. You know, it's it's like whoa, like, right? You want me to hug you? <laughs> That's yeah, I, yeah. That that is a good point, and I think you're absolutely right. So yeah, I, it really makes sense from Yuki's point of view to be hesitant about doing that, uh, or I, I guess I can I understand it better now that you reminded me about that. And I guess it is I guess it is a bit strange for Miko to to be. There. I mean, I guess she and Miyuki have been getting close over the past couple of volumes, but still they're right. not family, so I guess <laughs> no. in, in the Japanese culture it would still be kind of odd. Yeah, but you know I guess what what she what she needs is is. A girlfriend to really talk to, and <laughs> yeah, I guess maybe they could help. But even even then, I I feel like just Japanese people physical touch is not <laughs> very common, right? Um, unless you're, you know, very intimate, um, something like that. But it it still depends on the person. Anyway, so I guess Miko is just one of those person who really likes touch, and mm. it's a shame that it seems like Osoragi is just not offering that support for her yeah it's it's also something i've noticed it's kind of over time i guess it's kind of, we've kind of gotten to understand that while yeah of course she's a friend to miko she mm -hmm. i feel like there's a lot of ways that she doesn't really give the kind of support that miko needs yeah it's not just the hug thing i suppose but also well well we saw was it two volumes ago or whatever where she took tsubama's side in the whole ship mm -hmm. thing and like that for example and i don't know like she has been very hard to read yeah in my opinion so i hope to get more on her i suppose as well i mean and she is another one of those impossible girls so i do expect to get more on her right 
Yeah, Osaraki is definitely one of those kind of mysteries, other than the fact that we knew that she was shipping Tsubame and Shigami together. While she has in the past shown her respect and admiration for Miko and mm. and very caring at, at that, it seems yeah. lately, like you said, not distant, but just not being there for her as as much you, as you would think. And I guess it's because she's dealing so much with having feelings for Ishigami and she feels like that's she couldn't support that for whatever reason. So, but maybe maybe the fact that Ishigami got rejected, maybe she'll not necessarily switch teams because I feel like Osaraki is kind of stubborn that way, but maybe she'll offer more of a a ear, a shoulder to Miko. Maybe. Yeah, right, right. That would be nice. Anything more on Miko or anything around this here? Nope, I'm good. All right, then moving on to you, Ishigami himself. He got to thank Kazuno for all that he had done for him. Yeah. That was a really nice little scene, I thought. Um, really was. Like, just such a nice little moment. And I, you know, I, I really hope that the two of them are able to stay in touch after after Kazuno graduates. And I didn't, I really didn't expect the bromance to be that strong. But <laughs> you think about it, yeah, Kaz, Kazuno was one of the few people to kind of treat him as an actual human being, you know? Right, yeah. And not really buy into the rumors or whatnot and i think he would be, became a really good example for ishigami giving him a chance um I, he was the one that said ishigami to should do the race right i think uh, exactly yeah yeah because he, he he was the one that got injured so he couldn't run it so he yeah. asked if you would run it run it in his place like yeah i mean it was that and he was you know one of the two pep squad leaders Captains, like you know yeah. together mm -hmm. with with koyasu and so both of the two of them were just so good for you especially at that time they really like, they were really the were. whole sports festival yeah. arc you know volume nine we, we it was good <laughs> it was so good good stuff uh and yeah like he was definitely uh, you know an important part of that and and you know he mm -hmm. appeared later on you know i think because he i think had a room at the campus right and so there was a chapter where you visited him there where you got the idea to start training mm -hmm. I, I guess that's one of the more intimate chapters or scenes that we've had with Kazuno, but but yeah, it, I guess it, it shows that, or especially this goodbye scene really shows that they had gotten close. And, you know, it, it was very nice. Uh, you know, among all of those other graduation scenes or goodbye scenes in that first chapter, it was another one that really got me emotional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's that, that was an emotional chapter. You're right. Hmm. Very much so. Really was. I actually, I read it like on a bench in town like i was sitting like in like the, basically like the center of the city like on a <laughs> on a on a walking street like i don't know if you have those in america like it's a street like in, in like in like the like city center we usually in sweden at least i think a lot of european countries at least have this in like the city centers that there's usually like a bunch of streets that are just for pedestrians Oh really? Like the whole the whole street is just for 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 walking. Wow! And so I was sitting on one of those like on a bench on one of those streets reading the book because I had just gotten it. I had just picked it up, and uh, I I read the first chapter sitting on that bench or the first like two chapters or something. And I was just sitting there crying like, and there were people walking <laughs> by constantly. I was I hope I really hope nobody looks at me right now. <laughs> it was so embarrassing, uh, but anyway. <laughs> Well, just like we can't blame you for crying, you can't blame Ishigami for crying. Yeah. You know? Oh my God. Totally. Not only not only saying goodbye to Kazuno, but you know what happens in the next two chapters. Like, exactly. Rejected like that. It, mm. I don't. I wouldn't say it was a bad rejection per se. No. No. I think there's there's a lot of positives he could take from it, but even even despite that, it totally understandable that he would feel bad. You know, feel terrible and and feel kind of downhearted and cry like that. I can't blame him. Yeah, and like for the two of us, I think you know neither of us is a you and Tsubame shipper, but it's still mm -hmm. it's still it still obviously is a really sad scene, and and like just because the fact that he got rejected, like as you said, it's not a bad rejection. It's just getting rejected in general is tough, and especially if you really care and like that person as much as you do, like it's such a it was such a bitter bittersweet feeling kind of, and yeah, and I guess I. I, I do hope that eventually he'll be able to actually genuinely, you know, settle for and be friends with her. And like the, oh, that, I, I that, that so both too. of them will be able to, you know, keep that up, I suppose. That would be great. Yeah. But... You know, prove that relationships can exist between a male and female. And mm. I, I swear that was mentioned before. 
was it him or, or him being Ishigami or was it Kaguya who said that? Ooh, oh yeah, that's hmm. friendship between male and female. Like she, I think she, I think she says can happen. And then, and then she switches it. No, that never. Oh, that was at the school trip. It was at the. It was at the when they were in Kyoto. The, he, she, she was with like uh, Hayasaka's friends. Oh yeah, yeah. And then she sees Miyuki and Hayasaka. Friendship cannot exist between male and female. <laughs> That's right. Yes, yes, yes. Plutonic friendships. Or whatever. Right. Yeah, that, dude. That that had completely slipped my mind. So yeah, that's right. That kind of I guess theme or whatever you want to call it does yeah. come back here for some reason. I I thought that Ishigami had said it earlier, but now I just remembered. Oh no, it was Kaguya who right had said that. That's right, and yeah, surely that's gonna be elaborated on more because I I don't think Tsubame is completely done in the story. There's gonna be more with this. That would be kind of sad. Friendship, if yeah, right. She's I mean, there's not a whole lot of growth. Well, she could have more growth, but there's not. I don't think there's any like unanswered questions from her. Correct me if I'm wrong, people, but mm -hmm. I feel like she's basically done. But it would be nice for their, I guess, relationship to to show like the them being friends or having a come in, and maybe he asks her for various advice in things. And I don't know. I think it'd be cool. Yeah, and like I, I don't necessarily think she's gonna play a super big role moving forward, but she, I, I do think she will appear at least. In regards to this whole thing, that that she and 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 you can become friends or and be be friends, right? But I thought use confession to her here because I mean he had more or less confessed already prior to this, but he did sort of reiterate his confession again in this scene, and he uh, and uh, it sounded almost like a proposal even right right at the end of chapter two hundred and three. Anyway, what I thought was so interesting about that confession that he gave to to Tsubame was that he basically turned himself into an exaggeration or like an exaggerated example of what Kaguya and Miyuki have been trying to avoid becoming for a majority of the story. Oh. Like, he's so desperate to be with Tsubame that he throws away all of his pride and offers to, to change himself just for her. And he offers to do things that he otherwise would never want to oh, do. good point, good uh, point. Like, he is the perfect, in that moment at least, he is the, the perfect example of the person who confesses first. The, the person mm. who loses. That's a good point. I just thought that was, it was fun to see that so kind of over the top kind of, uh, but it is literally what kind of is, is explained on the very first page, page of the very first volume, kind of the thing that you should avoid doing or being. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, he was rejected, though, so it didn't become that. Mm -hmm. Although, I, I don't think it would have become that because Tsubame is a good person that she wouldn't have turned him into that kind of a loser, I don't think, even if she had, had <laughs> wanted to be with him. But still, it definitely... I, I think it was intentional for, you know, uh, of Akasaka to make you look that way in that scene. I thought it was pretty cool or interesting. Yeah, it was... I, I just really liked when he listed all of the things that he liked about Tsubame, like her her smile and the way, like mm -hmm. when she looks at people, he can tell that she's caring. And then he also mentioned like, I like her body. Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, of course. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that is... Right. I mean, that that's part of being attracted to someone. It is. And, and one of the traits that he mentioned that he adores about her was he likes her for having helped others without them even knowing about it sometimes. Yeah. And of course, that is a trait that he actually himself shares with her uh, but also Miko has that so you know if that's something that he, he finds attractive in a person then he you know Miko has a little bit of that at, at, at the very least so absolutely the ship is still afloat oh yeah, yeah <laughs> it's in game guys like come on <laughs> yeah come on let's come not fool ourselves come on I, although this the, this book did got, kind of get me down on it right a bit. <laughs> right I you know it's it's not looking great right now but that's just part of the story exactly like, yes. it'll be fine <laughs> right <laughs> maybe i'm a little too confident in, in knowing where the story is <laughs> no, going no. maybe you, maybe i should be worried your confidence is comforting to me <laughs> <laughs> i think we it was cool we got to see their date from all all those volumes ago yeah finally <laughs> finally don't really have much to say about that other than i thought ishigami he seemed, he seemed pretty pretty cool and calm and collected during that whole thing you know yeah versus Tsubame who's nervous but <laughs> Ishigami was the kind of the the calm one in that situation so yeah you know kudos to him to be able to be that way for sure 
you know, it just, I guess, another testament to how much he's grown. And how comfortable he was around Tsubame. Yeah, very true. So when you said that he'd never see Miko as a romantic interest, mm -hmm. do you think he meant that? Like, or how much do you think he meant that? Right. I, I think, I think it's fair to say that a part of him probably felt that way. Um, but I think another part could be that one Miko's in the room, you know, <laughs> like it'd be weird to be like, Oh yeah, I could see us dating, you know, that, that oh, yeah. kind of thing. Fair, fair. Right. <laughs> That's true. And so it, it's a very uncomfortable spot to put someone in, especially mm. when you don't want to get rejected. And I think right now Ishigami thinks that if I were to, if I were to say anything to this person that was remotely romantic or whatever, Mm. she would shoot me down you know right and <laughs> that's just that's just the relationship that ishigami thinks they have and miko kind of well they both kind of built up yeah so i don't think he completely meant it but obviously a part of him kind of feels that way yeah i think there was a i think he he when he and miyuki talked about girls in one chapter way like it was a long long time ago he and Miyuki were in the student council chambers talking about, I guess, girls and like whatever. Uh -huh. And I think that was, I think when they talked, they, they talked about how you would like either of the three student council girls. And I can't remember exactly, but he pretty much just disregarded both Kaguya and Chika for obviously diff very different reasons. Mm. But what he said about Miko back then was something like, I could see it, but it would never happen. I think something along the, like 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 that is something that he that he said. Yeah, like he, yeah. He yeah. could imagine it, like he could imagine himself with her, but it would never happen, or it could never happen. Mm -hmm. I think it was what he said. So, it was, a, I guess, a little bit of a similar thing where he at least voiced his some sort of well opinion on that. But but you're right in saying that this was in front of Miko, and even without their dynamic which is kind of to bash on each other, even with, mm -hmm. or at least it has been for a long time. Um, yeah. Even without that, it it's still, he still might have said this just because like, because it, it's, it's hard to say the right thing when you're kind of under that kind of pressure. If the, per, if, if the person that you're, if you have that, that you have to give an opinion on is right there in the room, you might not say right. the most smooth thing in the world because it actually because when you when you mentioned that and which made me think about this it reminded me of a situation i had once i'm going to be brief about this but we were some like a, a group of friends essentially and i had a crush on one of the girls mm. uh, she never knew or at least i don't think she did um <laughs> anyway someone pointed out that her last name rhymed with my first name so if we got married and I took her last name, my name would like my first name and last name would rhyme with each other and it would be funny. And so we just kind of laughed about that. And I, I, I think m my reaction in the moment was just kind of nah, like stop it. Like that, that, like that will never happen. Or like, something, or, mm -hmm. or like so something kind of like that would kind of shoot down any possibility of ever, <laughs> ever being a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, I guess I can sort of relate to you if if he didn't mean what he said there which I, I i don't think he meant it entirely maybe but right uh, i guess yeah we'll have to see i really don't think ishigami right now has much of any romantic feelings for her i mean no, obviously no. he can see her as attractive something like that but mm. i don't think at this point especially after getting dumped by tsubame yeah is he going to view her especially in the same light as she views him Right. No, you absolutely. Yeah. Go, going forward, it's going to be how do we get Ishigami to view <laughs> Miko romantically? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's going to be such an interesting. <laughs> well, yeah. We, yeah. We, the two of us really are sure of this. So we're speaking of it as if that was really going to happen. And but, but I really do hope so. Uh, but, but yeah, it's going to be so interesting to see how that is going to transition, I suppose. There better not be another. Like another person that comes into the equation oh yes no please 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 yeah miko has suffered enough <laughs> but they, they introduced so many characters and they were like all female at the end and i was like except for mikado obviously yeah and it was right just like ah uh, yeah it's i uh, don't i don't know i don't know it's too early it's too early to say and i had no idea <laughs> but just saying yes yes anyway anything more on you <laughs> that's all i have all right then moving on to tsubame koyasu 
I'll kick this off by just saying just how much I really li like loved. I, I loved how from the second chapter of this book, the one where she appeared, basically, from the very start of that chapter, we knew that her intention was to reject you. Right. But then as we started following along with her story, kind of her thinking about their time together, mm -hmm. at least I thought for at least part of that, that it started seeming like she may have been into him in a romantic way. Oh, really? Like, like hmm. as she was describing him and like, mm -hmm. well, because well, there were a lot of things that she really liked about him and she really, you know, she right. pointed those things out. And I sort of started feeling that maybe she did think of him in, in a romantic way because of all of those descriptions and the way that she thought about him. Uh, yeah. So as, as we were going through that, that inner monologue of hers, I, was, I started to, so, to almost think that she would change her mind and not reject him. But then obviously she does in the end. But mm -hmm. I enjoyed that ride kind of. And I don't know if it was intentional for people to have that experience that I did. But, mm. but I, I at least enjoyed it the way, the way I interpreted that. But I guess I, guess I, I just understand her all, all, like much better after that. Having, like getting to, know, to understand and know about all of those conflicting emotions within her. Because, well, rejecting someone that you like and that you care about that much isn't easy. Right. But it does... Well, it makes sense, and I understand her completely. Yeah, I, I'm kind of... I'm a little sad that she didn't have any sort of romantic feelings for him, but I'm, gl I'm glad she's true to herself. But I, I think it's also nice that she recognizes all the great qualities that Ishigami has and, you know, how much he's changed since coming to... or jo joining that the, the cheer squad and everything. And, yeah. You know, I, I think that was uh, really honorable of her and and also, you know, everything she does for him, I mean, yeah, part of it was for her own selfish reasons, but but also to help Ishigami in the end. And, and I think, you know, you, you can't really ask for too much greater love than that hmm. in terms of you, you know brotherly brotherly love or or you know friendship and whatnot. Right. So you can't you can't help who you fall in love with and you can't help who you don't fall in love with you know uh, absolutely and the fact that she just sees him as you know kohai someone who's like two years younger than she is understandable maybe they met in college maybe that, that <laughs> they're a little different but you know um, i had the thought that if they had met earlier like many years before now uh childhood friend or or, or, <laughs> or trope <laughs> or rather i guess if they had met before Koyasu had 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 gone through everything that she had gone through in her love life, mm. I guess Maybe. it's more it's more what I'm pointing at or trying to mm -hmm, come up mm -hmm. with here because she is still supposedly scarred from a lot of really bad experiences with with guys that that she's mm. dated, mm -hmm. and which is like completely understandable and relatable I think to anyone who's gone through something like that, and. It is hard to feel like you can get close to or, or allow yourself to fall in love with another person if you've gotten betrayed or, or, or at least gone through some sort of bad romantic experience like that. It just makes falling in love all the more difficult. Yeah. So I, I think I think she is suffering from that to a big extent. And if, well, I, I'm obviously I, I can't say for sure. Even without those bad experiences, she may still not have fallen in love with him because, as you said, we can't control that. Mm -hmm. But at least I think there may have been a little bit of a chance under those circumstances. I agree. But again, you, you can't emphasize enough how, how important it was for Ishigami that Tsubame was the one to reach out to him, and along with the entire club. But because mm -hmm. of her efforts to get to know him and to not even, not even like, oh, what do you like to do? Like, not even stuff like that, but just saying hi to him. Yeah, it seemed like that slowly <laughs> opened him up and everything. Right. So. Yeah. Saying good morning every morning and and right. and like seeing that tra tra transition or like the progression of that in this book was was really nice. For sure. At the end of chapter two hundred and five, Miyuki says that you will have to swallow his pride. <laughs> <laughs> and on the next page, we see you know a lone swallow flying. And, you know, mm -hmm. we'll let that obviously being a representation of uh, Tsubame and her equivalent from the Tale of the Bamboo Cutter. And there was 
on one of the between chapter pages in one of the previous books, this may have been when like around the time when Tsubame was kind of getting established in the story. Mm -hmm. I, th I, I guess there was a page where there was like a drawing kind of like old timey drawing, like not, it's, it wasn't like, I guess, I guess typical drawing style of something, I guess, from the tale of the bamboo cutter. I can't remember what it was though. Um, and there was like a text kind of describing the, the cowrie born from a swallow and kind of, well, yeah, the, the item that, that Koyasu kind of represents. Mm -hmm. Then there was like at the bottom of that little piece of text, there was like a final sentence that said that ever since this happened, people have been using the expression swallow their pride or swallow your pride. Hmm. But I feel like that can't be right. That can't be true. Can it? Cause I have no idea. I, it's not an expression I'm familiar with. Like, cause that's obviously that folk tale is Japanese and like, how would that, I, I don't know. I, I guess this could be looked up uh, at some point later, but it, it's right. something I, I recall. Uh, just because that exact expression was used here, obviously as a well a hint to to Tsubame, but the fact that it had been sort of established even previously in one of the books made me wonder just how true is that. <laughs> I suppose. Anyway. Yeah, there must be there must be another saying in Japanese that maybe maybe it doesn't necessarily use like Tsubame like the word Tsubame, but maybe it uses the kanji or something like that. Right. Right. Who knows. Mm -hmm. So is this one of the impossible tasks done? Like yeah, I think so. We, like, is that a check mark kind of a thing? <laughs> I suppose you could say that. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Right. So now we have how many more to do? <laughs> there would be four more. Four more. And we don't even know one of them. True. Uh, so the, we know three. We know Momo. We know Kodomo, and we know Kobachi. But there should be yet another one, I guess. If okay. Would it be crazy if it all had to do with Ishigami? Every one of them? Uh, yeah. I guess that, I mean, I don't know, it wouldn't be too crazy, but it would be interesting. And then the last one would end up being Miko. But, but we couldn't figure out how to, how to Yeah, how like, I feel like we would have been but able to... But that's a surprise, but that's a surprise, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe she has, like, another name that she goes by or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who knows? Who really knows? Yeah. <laughs> uh... But what is Momo? But Momo, yeah, Momo has no idea about Ishi. Or it doesn't. Yeah, they they don't. No thoughts on Ishigami. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't. I really don't know. Yeah. Uh, you're probably right. It could just be like the student council in general, kind of having ties mm. to them in some sense. Gotcha. Mm. Anyway, uh, anything more on Tsubame? It's well, she got into fight with uh, Otomo about oh, yeah. the truth of Ishigami, and it really got fiery i did not expect it to get that fire I, I thought otomo would kind of be like no way oh my gosh mm. but she, she really stuck to her guns apparently yeah um so that's too bad that whatever friendship they had just kind of it took a took a hit yeah it's so sad um so sad yeah and i was kind of expecting otomo to come back into the story some way like mm. actually come back and not that i really wanted it but i, I was actually i actually thought that Tsubame would bring her back for some reason, but I guess not. So if Otomo does come back, it has to be for some entirely different reason. Yeah, probably. Probably. Maybe she hears about the good rumors about Ishigami, and she's like, uh-uh. So she <laughs> comes back. Eh, yeah. You know, anyway. Yeah, I, I wonder. But yes. Moving on to Mikado Shijo. As we mentioned earlier, he transfers to Shuchin Academy now for the third year. And we didn't know too much about him. Obviously, he had appeared in the chapter where Maki travels to India. Or, well, both of them traveled to India. And right. uh, so I guess that was most of what we had at least seen of him. But there was also in Volume 17, we got a character bio for Maki. And I think the last little paragraph there... Uh, gave us a little bit of information about Mikado and but he he plays uh, soccer for mm -hmm. for like some local team or something and that he he had gone to a different school but well obviously now we see him starting in Shuchin and and it also we also got the information then in, in volume 17 that Mikado ranks first in the national pra practice exams which obviously we were also reminded of in this volume through Miyuki's notes mm, right 
and yeah, yeah, about that, we hope we talked about there. Like, there seems to be some sort of rivalry there, or that at least that there has been some. So obviously, mm-hmm. it's going to be exciting to see, how, like, what that's going to be about. And while I don't, I, I don't have any concrete idea or speculation for what it could be. Something that I have, or something that has come to my attention since we last talked about Kaguya-sama, is that Mikado's name means emperor. Oh, and. Oh. Obviously, the emperor is a character in the tale of the bamboo cutter. Mm-hmm. Arranged marriage. Well, that would be weird since they're related, but I guess it's not unheard of <laughs> in those sorts of uh, circles. This is ju- this is Japan. <laughs> it's know, also like... Japan. <laughs> Obviously, that it's frowned upon more modern Japan. However. This is the Shinomiya family we're dealing with. Yeah. And back then, it was very common to do that kind Although, of thing. Although, uh, I, I actually, before you said this, I hadn't actually considered the, the idea that he would, like, there would be that kind of thing with him. Oh, Arranged really? marriage with him, actually. Hmm. It makes sense, though, considering the source material. And I, I, and I guess their, well, yeah, as you said, like, their way of life, I suppose. Or the, the Shinomi family, at the very least. However, mm-hmm. it also is very odd, considering they are more or less... These two families are more or less mortal enemies. Mm-hmm. So, kind of, why would they pair their children together? Peace. Unless, yeah, right. Could For it be some, some kind of peace, peace sign? Mm-hmm. Kind of, I suppose. Yep. Uh, I'm not saying it's for sure, but I, I think that it's just a, a potential hurdle that would make... Mikado's entry into the story seem a little more I guess warranted because mm. being just an academic rival doesn't doesn't make sense to me. Like what's the point at this point? Right. Kind yeah, absolutely. But... <laughs> You're absolutely right about that. I well, he was in the Tale of the Bamboo Cutter. The the emperor was Princess Kaguya's final suitor after the five who got the five impossible tasks. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And I think he was also the one that received the immortality elixir before Princess Kaguya departed for the moon. And then he tossed that elixir into the crater of Mount Fuji. Right. I think that was that hit was him who, who did all that. I guess just the fact that there's a tie with him and Miyuki makes me feel like... Because okay, obviously it's not a one-to-one adaptation of the bamboo, tail of the bamboo <laughs> yeah. cutter. Uh, but I, I guess the tie there... Because the four girl characters that we know that represent these impossible demands Mm -hmm. and there should be a fifth that we don't know of they they don't represent a specific character they represent well technically and yeah a demand or an item or or yeah like a task or something like that Mm -hmm. so i'm wondering well while sure mikado's name is the emperor or, or means emperor so maybe he is literally representing the character of the emperor but it might also be something I guess less literal potentially, or like more kind of that you gotta kind of try to interpret more per- perhaps. So I was thinking if he represented the immortality elixir, or or somehow the the act of not waiting for your lover, or I don't know. I'm I I'm probably just rambling a little bit too much right now. So wait, are you implying that Mikado's gonna try to take Kage away from Yuki and not be an arranged marriage type of thing? No, I I don't know what I don't know why I think what I don't know why I think. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. Because because you well, well you just mentioned like not waiting and stuff you know not waiting to confess or or something like that. Mm. And I was like I don't, I don't know I just thought oh whoa does that mean like you think Mikado could have a thing for Kaguya? I don't know I I agree that I'm kind of uh confused at what why he's here i guess um excited to see what akasaka does with him yeah um but i i still feel like the him being the potential suitor for kage is is a possibility um whether or not he wants that to be the fact uh i don't know because i i don't think they i don't think the 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 suitor necessarily gets to choose Eh, it may depend on the family but i think most of the times it's just the family's like Okay, my son's gonna marry your daughter. Is that cool? Right. Cool. Although in the Shinomi case, probably like my sister's going to marry your son. Is that good? Okay. <laughs> yeah. But obviously, I, I'm just talking out of my butt here. I don't. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what it means. But 
uh, the the emperor thing just it seems like that would be a connection. Yeah, and you're you're right. It 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 does. There definitely is a connection. I, I guess I'm just happy to to or excited to see more focus on Mikado and see kind of what role he's going to play. Because it, yeah. I do get the feeling based on well that his name means emperor. I feel like it's going to be something important at the very least. Sure. And we got another male character, you know? A male yes, character. we need more of those. <laughs> we were like, oh, there's no, we don't have a lot, like, of main male character roles. Like, where are they? <laughs> Insert Mikado. Like, yeah, yeah. Good. Good. I mean, Kazan, we, we, had, we had a little bit of hope for Kazuno, but he is probably leaving now. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Uh, but yeah, yeah, bring in Mikado. I'm excited. Anything more on him? No. Okay, then... I guess m- most of the rest are, are pretty all pretty small, but I Hayasaka, all I got in her is that in the character index at the start of the volume, she has fine like they they finally updated it so that it doesn't say that her profession is Kaguya's personal assistant. It says that her former profession is Kaguya, Kaguya's personal nice. assistant. Nice. So it's all up to date now. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, I don't have anything else on her though. I don't either. Okay, then a little bit on Keishirogane perhaps. Okay. The girl on the front cover of the volume. <laughs> yeah. We learned that she made the decision to run away from her mother after having spent some time alone with her. Yeah. So that 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 clearly even like if it if it wasn't clear before that, it gives us the idea that the mother isn't such a good person to be around perhaps. Right. Well, like like Shirogane dad said, she's mentally unstable it seems like right now. Yeah. Um just because of what happened. So, yeah, it makes sense that because of that mental insta- uh, in- instability, she would take away K like that, and it makes sense that K would leave and can kind of leave that not great environment. Mm-hmm. But I like what she says about sometimes we have to separate ourselves from the people we love. I know I'm paraphrasing, but um, mm-hmm. not because we care less for them, but there's problems arise and we just need to be need to be away from them. Yeah, right. That's true. And I wonder who said that to her. Right. Well, I have a theory about that. Okay. Give it to me. She's telling Kaguya this, and Kaguya's like, wow, that's a really nice saying. I like that. And Kay pauses, and she's like, so do you not remember your... Mm. And it cuts off. Yeah. And I think she was going to say, you don't remember your mom. Right. Yeah, I thought so too. And I think the reason why she brings that up is because maybe Kay heard it from Kaguya's mom. I know that's crazy, but hear me out. Okay. (laughs) Like, we know that Kay really likes Kage. Like, she's kind of she's kind of obsessed with her. Mm. You know, maybe that's because she knew her mother and they look similar, and she really looked up to Kage's mother for whatever reason. Mm. Maybe it was her mother that encouraged Kay to leave the uh, Shirogane mom. You know, Mm. I don't know how they would meet. Why would they meet? Maybe they met in a hospital. I don't know. I feel like that that could be a connection there and yeah. it would make more sense why she, Kay would be like that quote doesn't mean anything to you or or mention that kind of quote obviously mm. she didn't she didn't go as far as to say like have you heard that quote before but it just right. seems kind of odd to go from saying that and then transitioning to you don't remember your mother yeah so. and, and the fact that she hesitated and or she stopped herself from, right. from finishing that sentence too that is interesting yeah. i yeah i like that i like that I guess the biggest issue is K is what two years younger than Kaguya and Miyuki. I think so. Yeah. So when did Kaguya's mother die? Exactly. You know? That is the big question. Yeah. Yeah. Old enough for K to remember? I don't know. Mm. Yeah. So my theory is not perfect. <laughs> no, no, but I, it is interesting though. I definitely like it, and I should be a lot of fun to. Find out. Maybe she was a famous television person for whatever reason, and <laughs> <laughs> oh, your words make sense. Yeah, that would make most sense. No <laughs> sense. Um, well, actually, yeah, Kay is two years younger than than Miyuki, right? And that means I think so. well, that, at, at least if that right? Right, yeah, at least. And if that is the case, then she she started her first year of high school now. Yeah. So she's, I guess. Yeah, with them, she has the potential to join the student council, the same student council. Mm. Oh my god! Or well, oh, well, I, I guess I shouldn't get ahead of myself. I don't know when the next election <laughs> is. Is is there only one election a year, or are there two a year? 
I don't know. I can't remember. Because there was one, obviously, when Miko joined. And that was in, like, early fall, late summer, something like that. I don't know if there is another... Now, that would have already been in that case, wouldn't wouldn't it? Mm. Uh, anyway, anyway, anyway. Mm. Then moving on to Koromo Shiranui. Finally, we got a face to her. A face for Finally. her. Like, we have been hearing her name, I think, at, at least two different occasions prior to this. And, uh, mm-hmm. and yeah, she is one of the other impossible girls. And apparently she's on TV, perhaps, or like she's filming some kind like of that. thing, kind of show, perhaps, uh-huh. or whatever it is. That's, that, that, that's cool. I'm very excited to get to know get to know her, understand what kind of person she is. Yeah, can be interesting. But obviously, like yeah, she was mostly like a little bit of a, te- yeah, like a, te- a, a tease at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, still very excited for that. Anything more on her? No. Okay, then Hifumi Abe mm. is a character that we just got to see like the feet of. And cat. And and a cat. What about the cat? <laughs> I just got the same vibe from that sort of as we get at the end of volume six when we see miko ino's back oh really kind of because we just got to see miko's back looking at the kind of the sign that was like for applications for the student council Mm -hmm. uh, positions or president thing and then miko ino in the volume after that and onward would, would go on and become one of the main characters and i just Obviously, I can't know, but I got the same kind of vibe from that, and so I wonder: Will this Hifumi Abe person, whoever it is, go on to becoming like a mainstay, like main cast character, perhaps? I don't know. Good question. <laughs> I mean, yeah, may- maybe. I mean, it's just it's so hard to work off with. You just get a cat, and that's it. It's like, what? <laughs> yeah, maybe get a face. The only other two characters I got left here are also very minor, uh, but it's Hikaru Obayashi and Komari Michida, or Machida, uh, the two homeroom teachers of the third and second years, ah. uh, which we haven't really gotten like that much focus on like the teachers before, especially especially the one for the third years. So I wonder, I guess, or it, it seems to me at least like at least like the third year teacher there is going to play a little bit more of a role than the teachers have before. I think that'd be neat. Uh, that teachers are definitely kind of absent from this entire story. Right. I guess it has been about the student council more so, but mm. now we'll actually get some teachers involved, maybe. Right. Yeah. Like we've had the principal, but True. none, but no actual teachers. <laughs> Speaking of which, did we finally get the principal's name, or did we already have his name before? I. Don't actually remember it, if we it, had it before or not. <laughs> but now we, uh, for sure we do. Tedashima. Oh, yeah. I think that's his name. That's right. That's right. And it's interesting that he was the one that put them all together, like put the the third years from the student council president all together. All, all, well, really all those, I guess, high profile students in one class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? I wonder why he's so invested in helping Kagi out. Because he says he's he's doing it for Shinomiya. Exactly. Yeah, it's strange. I mean, he's always been strange. Like, right. back in, like, the French visit chapter, he was very <laughs> weird there. And then, like, the uh-huh. chapter where he took photos of the student council members. Also, just such a weird guy. I mean, he always seems to have, like, good intentions. Ulterior motives. Uh, oh, ulter- oh, yes. Good, I will, good intentions. <laughs> well, well, both of those things. He has ulterior motives for good intentions. I, I think, <laughs> yeah. at least. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Any other characters we want to talk about? Are we not talking about Oko at all? Uh, we, we can do that. I, I didn't take any notes on him, but if you have anything, oh. go for it. Well, I just... One, he's a jerk. Oh, Scumbag. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, obvi- obviously, we, uh, we could figure this out, that uh, people from the Shinomiya clan family are not going to be great. Hmm. And that he's very much caught up in the old way of thinking of, you know, patriarchy being the boss, you know? Yeah. Things very, very little of females, hmm. which is very sad. And he calls the Hayasaka family his pawns. Yeah. Um, so I think that for Hayasaka's sake, I, uh, Hayasaka's sake, it, it, I don't know, it, it seems like this temporary piece of being away from the Shinomiya like uh, service, I, I know I worry that it may, may not last. Exactly right. I got that kind of worry too, which was why I was so into the idea of Kaguya eventually 
taking over the the entire mm. Shinomiya clan completely, and thus she would be able to free, well, yeah, well, basically free all of the Hayasakas and and everyone else who is under their iron fist. Yeah, I agree. And then lastly, I I think o- Oko is using the fact that he's not really doing anything about I. Um, mm. in order to keep Kaguya from leaving the States. Because mm. I guess technically she could just do it. Um, right. But he's basically threatening her that if you do that, I'm just going to take Hayasaka back. Exactly. Kind of a jerk move. For sure. Oh, my God. Yeah, he, he is one of the worst. One of the worst people in the world. Or in this in this world. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, like, oh, my God. I hate him. <laughs> But that's that. That's the point. <laughs> is I, I wonder if the father is worse or just the same or what? But... Well, according to Oko, it seemed like the father was worse. He because the, the way he sort of phrased some of his sentences about the dad was uh-huh. it made it sound like like Oko himself was the merciful one. Oh boy. So that yeah, that makes me really worried. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> mm. Okay. Yeah. I think that's. All I got. I know we've talked a long time. I'm so we sorry. We have. Oh, it's it's fine. I mean, it it it's it's become a rarity to talk about a Kaguya-sama volume these days. It really has. <laughs> so <laughs> we gotta cherish the moment. But uh, <laughs> but that's it for the characters. For this episode, we decided to not do any relationships discussions. Uh, that was originally at the start of the series. We talked about like we had like a romance discussion, but uh-huh. at some point we changed that into relationships and. Now I'm thinking about just getting rid of it. I, f- I, f- I think it worked well uh, talking about the characters, like putting it all into the character discussions like we did today. So I think we're going to probably stick with that from now on. Yeah. But moving into the last bit of the discussion here, the comedy. So, okay. So w- one thing I noticed that I, well, I noticed on my second read, I didn't, I didn't actually notice it on my first one, that in the little flashback of when uh, you and, and Tsubame first met at the pep squad we see the whiteboard in the pep squad room <laughs> yeah. and there is yeah. there is the 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 kibari fakachinmo is drawn on the whiteboard like the, the the ball with the flags and the eye and the legs oh was drawn, oh i didn't connect that he oh. was drawn on the whiteboard there uh because oh. on, on the whiteboard we, we do see because back in volume nine when that was actually happening live we we saw a couple of the of the shots of the whiteboard, but only like parts of the whiteboard mm-hmm. at a time. So we got to see like the uh, being best, absolutely ye crazy ha, Instagrammable. <laughs> Have we switched bodies? And like like <laughs> we, like we got to see some of those, but but here we get to see like almost all of the whiteboard, and we also see like another part of the whiteboard. Someone drew that ball with the eye and the flag and the legs. Huh. We'll always do our best, and then it comes in like me too, <laughs> friendship. <laughs> it's, it's uh, yeah, it's 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 cuter there than it has been when we when we've seen it oh, before. Yeah. But <laughs> but Gosh. it was a fun little little reference to that. <laughs> Morning glories blooming in a courtyard are sexier. I <laughs> I thought that it's a pretty good diss, I guess. <laughs> uh, it's just so random, and I I totally understand why why uh, Tsubami would la- laugh at it because of that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like where where did he get that from? It sounds kind of like her meme, uh, oh, lingo yeah. lingo that she's used in the past. Dude, you're absolutely right. It totally does. I wonder if if he was trying to go for something like that when he said it. Oh, <laughs> who knows. <laughs> Uh, so the the broken Ishigami chapter is hilarious. It is. You know, oh my god! Just just how awkward it is, and then he's like woof woof meow meow whoa, like <laughs> and his yeah, face, like his face when yeah. he says I failed. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> uh, and Chika says like someone please say something weird right now, not realizing <laughs> that she could just say literally anything herself. Uh, yeah. Her unawareness is just so funny. Yeah. And he's like, what are you talking about? I've never said anything weird my whole life. Or, or, <laughs> like, super serious. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. All you had to do, Chica, was be yourself. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oof. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, she kind of deserved that one, though, I think. <laughs> A- after having pushed everyone to their limit like that. Kaguya stepping into Miyuki's messy room 
and like it's kind of creepy room it was just su- <laughs> such a weird he's it doomed was, it was <laughs> fantastic like it wasn't just all of the notes on his wall it was also like everything that Kay had tossed in there <laughs> uh, what was that poor magazine doing in there that must have been daddy shiragana's right yeah must have been because it wasn't in miyuki's room exactly precisely that's the thing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so yeah <laughs> prayer oh dear mm. Hide your porn. Yeah, yeah, you got to do a better job with that, Daddy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't call me Daddy. <laughs> no, I, I heard how weird that sounded when I said it. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, going, going back just a little bit. Uh, yes. You, you, when, when uh, Miko says you could give me a hug, it was like danger, danger. Mm, no, mm. <laughs> like that. Uh, <sighs> I mean, they got, they gave me a good laugh because I wasn't expecting it. Yeah, and I guess when I when I read that part, I didn't really think of it as that weird of a thing. But then I oh really? I, I heard oh. Miyuki's reasoning or like kind of his excuse for not wanting to do it. I was like, okay, that's fine. Uh, and then we talked about it earlier today, and I was reminded that hugging culture isn't that popular in Japan. Yeah. And so yeah, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. But when I read it, I I, I felt like, well, yeah, give her a hug, like make her feel better. <laughs> it's true. I mean, I would have hugged her. Well, I mean, obviously you have feelings for that, <laughs> but. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But <laughs> if it's your f- close friend or someone that you're, you know, pretty good with and she's mm. venting to you, yeah, yeah, you, you give that person a hug, at least in, in our culture. But yeah, right. there's, yeah, as we've explained. Right. But anyway, right. I thought it was funny because of the implications. <laughs> Def- definitely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, and oh my God, Karen Kino has gone off the deep end. Yeah, like, what the freak? The last chapter. What the freak? <laughs> it has nothing to do with me trying to get the opportunity to pursue my crush so I can date him, or at the very least, have sex with him. What the freak? Like, why no? Why? Uh, <laughs> that's bad. So weird. Bad, Karen. <laughs> that's, uh, it, that, that I really didn't know her ambition was that far. <laughs> went that far. Oh goodness. I guess it'll be fun to see more of uh, more of them if they're going to be in the same class. At, at least if if the, if there's going to be more focus on like the classroom scenes, because I'm I'm sort of getting that feeling now since everyone's in the same class. Plus there oh, is yeah. a like an established classroom or homeroom teacher. I feel like there might be more like classroom scenes. Uh, for Good now, point. Potentially. So point. so yeah, getting to see all getting to see more of all of these characters could be a lot of fun. I agree. Speaking of that scene, you know, finally. She- <laughs> Shindo is here. It's like, oh yeah. Like, wait, who is this man? <laughs> who is I, Shindo? <laughs> I thought, yeah, I thought it was, uh, I thought it was hilarious. It, it um, was absolutely. <laughs> I don't know. It would be interesting to see him actually become a character. Right. I don't necessarily hope for it, but it would, it would be kind of funny if this just random guy is suddenly a thing. <laughs> really, I, I hope I'm right about him becoming like a. Look, if it means that Chica gets a love interest and gets some character growth, dude, I'm all for it. Yes. Because she, she at least knew of him. Kakia didn't. <laughs> Everyone uh, knows uh, Shindo. <laughs> Come on. Gosh. Don't, don't be like that. I, I, really, I really want to see more of him now just because he, he, he really made a great impression. Like, <laughs> it's, I, I, I want to get to know this guy. <laughs> like, who is he? Who is Shindo? <laughs> I can't ask that question in, like, enough. The last thing I'll say is g- going back to when uh, Kaguya visits just when K opens the door and just shuts it and then <laughs> yeah, oh, like, yeah. okay I, I must be imagining things it opens again just the same facial expression Kaguya has and just that whole thing <laughs> it's and... the same exact drawing <laughs> yeah 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 it's great oh I love it <laughs> so funny yeah yeah it was great <laughs> good stuff so absolutely I guess wrapping up with I guess whatever predictions we have left um, I have a few little things noted down, uh, kind of a standing prediction of mine, or, well, well, it's getting very close, incredibly close now, so I'm going to really try to emphasize it. The Culture Festival, which happened back in December, when Miko picked up that heart that had, that, that uh, or, well, uh, yeah. you had picked it up and you had handed it into Miko, so he technically gave her a heart at the festival, which has that whole meaning and all. Uh, mm-hmm. It ended on either December 
21st or 22nd, one of those, I can't remember exactly. And she would maybe be able to claim it three months later, so March 21st or 22nd. And hmm. the graduation for the third years happened on the March 10th. And then there was the spring break that already happened, and that's maybe a week, I guess. Maybe a week and a half, I don't know, I don't know. But that means we should be very close, like, we should pretty much be right there at that date now, when Miku will be able to claim that heart. So I'm expecting, mm -hmm. I'm definitely expecting to see that in the next volume. Okay, I'm like, ready. I'm, I'm, like, it, <laughs> Let's it's do got, it. It's gotta, it's gotta. I'll be excited for that. Yeah. Uh, another thing that I think we'll s probably see next volume, maybe, is Miyuki's new place. Yes. Because then they, they moved during spring break, right? Exactly. They, they should have technically already moved, so. Mm. Yeah. So hopefully we get to see that. And then just more drama. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll see. Maybe we'll see the backstory for Miyuki and Mikado if they if they have one. Yeah. Whereas it's not just it's not that Miyuki just only knew him by name, right? Like he probably knew him before. I I'm gonna assume he uh, he knew him before. Okay. I I'll, I can't know for sure though. <laughs> and I'm sure we'll learn more about Abe and Shiranui. Exactly. I think those are the two like. Well, besides Mikado, the the two new uh, figures in the story that we don't know what role they'll play yet. So exciting to see what that would be. For sure, very very excited. And yeah, I I just I guess one of the things I mentioned is they we totally didn't get a white day thing. So that's, that's right. Oh yeah, we talked about that, and that should yeah. have already happened. So yeah. Oh well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It would have. <laughs> I think I thought it would have been funny, but. Maybe yeah. that's too overdone in, in manga. <laughs> maybe, yeah, I suppose. And, yeah, and they maybe would have turned out too similar to Valentine's Day. Like, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. But because we talked, at least when I, I think when I talked about it, I, I mentioned it as it as an opportunity for you to give Miko something. Uh, mm. Or, well, chocolate, I suppose. But, um, mm -hmm. and that would be nice. But Miko's birthday is coming up on May 5th. So that's not too far away either, since we're at the end of March now. So, like, just over a month until that. So I guess mm. that could be something cool. Uh, yeah. Although before that, we should have, like, pretty much right as this new volume starts, I think we should have the, the heart resolution, too. Like, the thing that, that she will be able to claim that after three months. That, that, that yeah. should, I'm pretty, very sure that should happen any time now. I'm excited to see that one. But, mm. yeah, now it's like, oh, man. What is going to happen with that? Yeah, all right. <laughs> it is kind of rocky, but hopefully, you know, hopefully it turns it the other way. Right, yeah, yeah. Super exciting. And the last thing I'll say, and this is like sort of a prediction, but also a little bit of a wish, I suppose, uh, is something I, I've been thinking about all of the five main characters, like the student council members. Mm. And I've, I sort of feel like all of them, if you just pair them up like in pairs... All constellations mm -hmm. or, or all possible combinations kind of have like a, a, a cool kind of dynamic and a history and kind of like a thing between the two of them. Like if you just mm. ra randomly pick two of them with each other, except for the combination Kaguya and Miko. I feel like that that combination is lacking or there hasn't been that much focus on the two of them as mm. a as well as a duo, I suppose. Uh, and so that's something that I'm expecting and hoping for, like more of like I, for them to develop a, a closer bond with each other. And you remember Kaguya's friendship test that was established a few volumes back. Mm. She had like a test to to see if someone was like a well worthy of being her friend. Yeah. Maybe that's something that we could see her put Miko through that test. Uh, yeah. I guess that that could be one method at least of going through or, or uh, for yeah. the, for the story to explore there. Uh, friendship or their relationship potentially but you Indeed. know it could be something entirely different too but I, I i just really want to see the two of them grow closer especially since kaguya was so on team uh, tsubame oh yeah that you know it would be interesting to see her shift gears and be like you know what now th because she knows that miko likes ishigami mm -hmm. and obviously she's not going to force ishigami to like <laughs> miko but why not join her boyfriend in supporting Miko. Exactly. Yeah, no, I think I think that's a good good idea. One one thing I just noticed is that on the cover of this volume, 
behind a K, you get the yen dollar sign. Oh, you, you're right. Say, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. How didn't what? I see that? I just it just looked like something different to me. I, I get maybe I looked in like the spaces in between and like saw that. Yeah. As a thing. Oh, my God. You're right. You're right. I wonder. Oh, I guess. Oh, yeah. That's because everybody we were sending money when she appeared in the, on the camera. Is right? that why? I, I mean, <laughs> it's the only correlation I can think of right now. I, I, <laughs> uh, that's so sick funny. People. She's a minor. <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness. <laughs> that's that's a funny, funny thing. Uh, anyway, yes. It has been a blast to talk about Kaguya again. Sorry for talking your guys' ears off. Oh, yeah. I mean... <laughs> It, it's been uh, I, I had I had fun and uh, I did too. Great, great to hear. And so, if you enjoy our content, you can follow us on Twitter at Umami Manga, and it would be lovely if you'd like to support us by either rating our show on the podcast platforms or subscribing to our channel Umami Manga on YouTube. If you like this episode, please share it with anyone you think might enjoy it too. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time when we'll talk about Volume Twenty Two. Bye bye. See you later. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So rad. Oh, right. <laughs>